For many years, constant expressions, as in expressions which could be evaluated at compile time, were very limited. In essence, you couldn't do much besides using literals or integral constants. Fortunately, those rules have been extended. C11 introduced the constexpr keyword. Its usage can be broken into two parts variables and functions. The former isn't much different than using pain and const. Constexp requires an initializer, while const not always. Let's see it in practice. Let's create a class. Create widget as usual. And inside, let us declare two constants. One static const int, let's call it c1, and the other static const int const, sorry, const exp int c2. And by the way, you can already see I'm using Compiler Explorer instead of Visual Studio. If you don't know what it is, click the link below in the description. So what we can see here is that the compiler is generating an error for c2. When using const exp, the constant expression, the constant variable or well, in general, the constant here needs to have an initializer. Let's set it to 1, and the error goes away. If we were to use C1, we need to somehow define it. Well, somehow, we need to define it somewhere. So, we will probably write something like this. Const int widget C1 equals something one so that is pretty much the only difference between plain old constant variables and the new context variables just the place of initialization let's clear it for now the more interesting case is context functions before c11 you couldn't call the function where a constant was expected as you can already see I have written the good old factorial function, hopefully without errors. And let's see what I mean. Let's create a plain and simple arrays of ints. For example, int a, its size, let's say it would be a factorial. Ah, I can't write a factorial of, let's say, 2. Too many and let's default initialize it. And what do we have here? An error. Variable sites object may not be initialized. Why it not be initialized? Well, because it's a variable size. And it's variable size because we are calling a function here which returns some int. Therefore, the compiler at compile time. Well, in theory, because in practice compilers are smart enough to know these things, but in theory doesn't know what the actual size is and cannot initialize our array. So what can we do with it? Well, let's use our new context keyword. And suddenly everything works. And why? Because context allows the compiler to run this code at compile time. So the compiler at compile time knows exactly what the size of this array is and you can treat it as if you simply put a constant value here. Of course, that doesn't mean that such functions will always be evaluated at compile time. The compiler will invoke them at runtime well when it's required at runtime but it will try to get the final result at compile time when possible. Okay, let's maybe take another example where we can use this in practice. Well, a part of declaring arrays, defining arrays, we might use it pretty much everywhere a constant value or in general a constant expression is expected. For example, let's create a template 
which takes a value parameter in n. And what would that template be? Ah, let's use another new feature. Well, relatively new because it's been a few years now called variable templates. Let's say this template will be of type int. Its name will be value. It will be const int. This is important bit because we want it to be const and even more so we want it to be const expr and the value would be n. Everything works. Cool. So let's use that template now. Instead of simply return zero, maybe let's return value of factorial ah, maybe three. And look what happened here. The compiler omitted all the code of this function, ran it at compile time and simply put the result here in this register. So our return value of factorial of 3 evaluates to simply constant 6. Now what happens when we remove all those const experts? Let's remove this one and we already have an error. Non-type template argument is not a constant expression. Well of course it's not. It's a simple function call at this moment. The compiler is not allowed to run it at compile time, even though we just seen it's smart enough to do that. We even can see a hint here. Non-const expr function factorial cannot be used in a constant expression. Note the word const expr. So the compiler is already telling us what to use. And it works. Let's try something different. Let's remove this variable template. Now, let's introduce another variable, let's call it n, call factorial of n. Well, everything works as before, we got 6. But let's do a trick now. Whoa, what happened there? Well, by introducing the volatile keyword, we disabled optimizations any optimizations, including running factorial at compile time. So what we have here is a lot of code. And this whole bunch of code computes our factorial at runtime. And we can already see there's our return, where is the result assignment? Ah, and we can already see that we simply don't have the final result move to the final register anywhere. It's all being evaluated at runtime using all this stuff. Not really good, right? Much better, at least in my opinion. So you might be wondering what functions can be declared const expert run at compile time. After all, most of the time they will depend on runtime data or might contain statements which are not possible to execute in compile time. There is a well-defined set of rules which govern when a function can be constexp. For example, constexp, as we already know, can be applied to function, but also to function templates or constructors. Constexp constructors are another story. I will not go into the details how they differ from normal function. You can Google it up if you are interested. Just now it's possible, but there are certain additional restrictions. But let's get back to our functions. The function cannot be virtual. Note this might change in C++20. That would be fine, right? The return type shall be a literal type. Okay, so in our example, it's a simple int. Each parameter shall be a literal type. In our example, again, it's a simple int. All it's good. The body shall be deleted, defaulted, or consisting of statements other than an ASM block, so you cannot run your assembler instructions, a go-to statement, so you cannot jump out to any arbitrary place, a label outside a switch statement, well, it makes pretty much sense just as go-to, a try block, we really don't want to deal with all those nasty exceptions at compile time, right? and the definition of a variable of non-literal type or a stat static of thread storage duration. 
Okay, that I think also makes sense because static at thread storage durations are something very runtime specific. Or also a variable for which no initialization is performed. Well, that also seems obvious because everything needs to be known at compile time. And you can already see my cat working on the keyboard. Going back to the topic. So, those are pretty restricting rules. But if you analyze them, it would all make sense. The compiler needs all the information up front to evaluate a constant expression, which in turn implies that all parts of the expression, including function calls, etc., etc., must also be constant. That rules out every statement which could only be executed in runtime, like memory management, I.O., etc. And we have those constructors which I briefly mentioned before, they have some additional requirements. Fortunately, those rules can be intuitively summarized as a constexp function can call only other constexp functions. So that is pretty much it for constexp. I really advise you to do the following. When possible, if possible, if that makes sense, try to declare everything as constexp. You really give the compiler a hint that all of this can be evaluated at compile time so we can save our precious CPU cycles. I hope you found all of this informative. I hope you learned what constexp does. If you have any questions, post them down below. Go to Compiler Explorer and see what effects your constex declaration actually have. Have fun programming. Keep subscribed if you're not subscribed yet. And I see you in the next one.